Hey guys, it's Issa with Journey to Programming. I want to show you guys how to use lists in C Sharp. If you've used arrays before or you've used uh, vectors in C++, uh, list is similar to a vector in C++ in that it's dynamic in size and it's flexible in that way. But if you're used to using arrays and vectors from C++ and you're moving into C Sharp, you may be inclined to jump ahead and try to use arrays when lists are a great alternative, they're flexible in that they're dynamic and they do not waste space. They just take up the room that you've actually put into the list. So uh, I wanna show you how to use them, how to initialize a list, how to add data into them, and then how to traverse them. It's really simple, it's really straightforward. Let's make this really short, okay? So what we have here is a blank slate C Sharp application in uh, Visual Studio. I think I'm using 2017 here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize a list. I'm going to add data to it. And then I'm going to traverse and print out that data for you guys. I am using a console application. Let's just make sure I chose that correctly. Oh, I did and it's off to the side. Let me make sure I bring that in. So there's the actual console window. So that's great. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and initialize a list for you. All right, so let's create a list here. So let's add some notes. And the way you actually declare a list is you use list. It's a part of system.collections generic, <clears throat> which is one of the standard libraries here for C Sharp. Inside of the brackets, we want to add a data type. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use string. And what this is going to help us create is a basically a object or a container that can contain strings, OK? Instead of making an array of strings, I'd like to make an, a list of them. And that way, I could only allocate the space needed to hold what I have in there. I don't have to allocate a huge array, which will have wasted space because I don't need it all. Um, so I'm going, to, I'm going to call this my str list, so string list. And in order to initialize it, we've got to say new list string. And you can put this on two lines if you prefer. I, I like to simplify it, write it all on a single line. But you could go ahead and write it like this, depending on your style and the way you like to kind of write out your code. I think it's clear enough to declare it all on one line. And at this point, we've declared and initialized a list in memory. And the way this works is this thing's empty. It takes a very little space. <clears throat> I think uh, it's basically taking, uh, taking up just like one byte in memory right now, just to have uh, kind of a placeholder head to the list, okay? Um, let's go ahead and actually insert data into this. So to insert data into a list in C Sharp, you use the dot add method. So if we go ahead and do a dot add and we add in a string, let's say uh, hello world is our string here, just temporarily, then that should compile, we should be good to go and that'll insert it for us. Now, if I want to add in a whole bunch of data, just for our testing purposes, what I would do is I could do something like a for loop and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and just insert a whole bunch of integers and I'll start it at, let's say, 1,000, and I'll have it go backwards. So while i is greater than or equal to 0, i minus minus, and what I'll do is I'll insert this as text into my list by doing a conversion at runtime uh, of the int to a string. There we go. This way we have a little bit more data in there when we go to print it. So let's call this add data into list. All right, so the reason this could be useful is if you guys are reading a, say a file that you've pulled off a website, say you're trying to scrape some website for data, maybe it has street names, maybe it has phone numbers, maybe it has uh, usernames, etc., and you wanna add those into a structure at runtime or a container, and you want to do that in a quick loop and you want to add into a list, what you can do is you could parse that file. If it's JSON, 
you can go ahead and do some kind of JSON parsing and then retrieve it and put it into a list structure. And that way it's easy access, easily accessible. A lot of the time that, that should actually read it into um, like a dictionary class or a map, but that's just an example I'm giving you guys right now. And uh, let's jump back into the list manipulation here. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to print out my list so that I can see that our data has been in there. So I've looped and inserted data into it. Now the next thing I wanna do is I wanna print it. So there's a few ways we can do it. We could print it using a for each loop for each int or actually string s in our list. We can do a console dot right line of the string. So this is gonna create an iterator from the stir list and then it's gonna iterate in the for each loop for every string in that list and print it out using for each. Now the other way we could do this is we could just print this using a for loop. And the reason I wanna show that is because a list can also be indexed. So you don't actually have to iterate it from front, iterate through the list from front to end. You can access it randomly by indexing the data. And that's one of the really advanced, uh, what really cool little advanced features that are available in the lists. So uh, let's go ahead and say index. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a for loop int, let's just use i is equal to zero while i is less than stir list dot, is it length or count? Count i plus plus. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out console dot right line stir list at i. So I'm gonna go ahead and break point before this so we can create a little separation between our, our printouts. But I'm gonna go ahead and run this and show you guys what the output is. So if I run it in debug, my window open on my other screen again, you can see it ran through our first for each pass here and it printed the data that we added. So we began with 1000 and then we went backwards down to zero. So if I scroll all the way up here, and oh, there, there we go. It starts at a thousand and we end at zero here, right? And we iterated through this using a for each loop here. I haven't run through my for loop. You can see my breakpoint sitting on that line ready to execute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and run this for loop for you guys. So I'm gonna hit F5 to continue. All right. There it is. And my breakpoint's now at the end of my main function here, my main method. So we take a look at the output in our console log and you can see it ended here the first time it went through the for each and now we began another printout using the for loop. And we traversed through the entire list. So one of the advantages I didn't talk about in regards to lists is the list container uh, really does contain a lot of functionality which is already set and good to go that's built into C Sharp's system.collections.generic libraries. And those really add a lot of functionality that you don't have with arrays. It's one of the reasons why a lot of people tend to use lists instead of arrays in C Sharp. Unless there's a real, really big reason for you using an array, most people will just choose to, to, to use lists. And those main reasons that you would choose to go with an array is if you already know the defined size of the data set you're gonna be introducing and you only need to be able to index and randomly access it, then that may be fine. You guys can go ahead and use an array. Uh, another reason would be if you're really trying to optimize your solutions uh, and you're getting really, really granular with the optimizations you're making, so you decide to go with um, basically using an array that's fixed in size and uses a little bit less memory space uh, than a list will because of the functionalities that a list provides you with. So that's how you would really use a list. With this basic information, you guys are able to do a lot of really cool stuff. Again, all you need to do is initialize using the, uh, the list call here, its data type, and then go ahead and declare it as new then how to add into a list. So this 
can be done really easily if you guys have large data sets. Just go ahead and loop through it and insert. Um, if you ever want to convert it to an array, so say you have a data set and you want to convert it to an array, you already have the functionality of doing that. So let's say we want to output the list, uh, output the list as an array. What you could do is you could just say stir list dot to array. And that's one of the, the really powerful functionalities that the lists already have in them. Additionally, if you ever want to search for something in here, it already has a contains method. So if you're looking to see if the, the list has a certain piece of data already existing in it, because you only want to insert unique items in your list, what you can do is you could do something like check if already exists. So if, uh, so in this case, I want to insert data that I know doesn't already exist in my list. So if my list doesn't contain whatever data, hello world, then I'm going to add it. All right. So this is really, really powerful in terms of giving you a lot of control over how you can use the structure uh, or how you can use the container. Uh, again, you guys can use this for a lot of stuff in C Sharp. We mainly use lists instead of arrays. We do use a lot of other data structures like linked lists, hash tables, dictionaries, etc. But this gives you exposure to how to use a list. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments down below. Have a good one, you guys.